we take authority over the spirit of witchcraft. Witchcraft power being released against this church. Be pulled down by fire. Hallelujah. Witchcraft curses. Go back to your sender. Hallelujah. Every coven shouting our name out in the night. Fail by fire. Fail by fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirits of marriage failure. We bind you in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of limitation. Fail by fire. Limitation sent against my life and family. You are a liar. Be pulled down by fire. Be destroyed by fire. Come on, y'all might as well stand up on this. Don't break, don't break. Come on. Every spirit of lust attacking my mind, attacking my body. You are a liar. Be arrested. Come out. Ow. 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 Loose me in Jesus' name. Every water spirit released against my life. You water spirits, you water spirits, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, in Jesus' name. Come on, get a lost and pray. Hallelujah. 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 Every arrow fired into my body. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. In Jesus' name. Spirits of infirmity attacking my body. You are a liar. You are a liar. Come out. Come out. Come out, out, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, lay your hand on your head. Every spirit attacking my mind, attacking my thought life, by the power in the name of Jesus Christ, be put down by fire. Be pulled down by fire. Be pulled down by fire. Be pulled down by fire. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, get an awesome prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. All right, you can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to pray against the. You have to pray against the spirit of limitation. That's a a blocking spirit that's said to frustrate you, cause delay, keep you from reaching the door that the Lord has before you. Hallelujah. You know the spirit of limitations on your life. It's the spirit I call the spirit on the edge of my breakthrough. That demon that shows up right when I... Oh, you might as well come on and fight it there. Every spirit on the edge of my breakthrough. You are a liar. You are a liar. You are a liar. Out, 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 out. Loose my life. Loose my life. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 That's that spirit that shows up 
when you're about ready to take an exam and you study but you get the wrong answers. Spirit of limitation. Spirit that shows up. You meet somebody, marriage looks promising, but then it's dashed on the rocks. Spirit of limitation. Spirit on the edge of my breakthrough. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Y'all ready for the word? Come on, get your Bible. Let's go. Now, I believe according to Galatians 6 and 6, and then you read that. Don't just hear me say Galatians 6 and 6. Go read it. Uh, it says that... Um, that if that 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 if you are instructed in the word, then you must share all good things with your instructor. I told you I don't I believe in giving by obligation. In other words, I believe if you receive, you give. And I believe because you're receiving from this ministry, you, you know, realize the, that that we've put uh, these free videos on YouTube for years, and I'm just you know, and these video. I'm listen. We get all around the world. This message is blessing people all around the world. Everybody. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many calls and emails we get. Uh, talking about how God is transforming people's lives, bringing deliverance and healing and restoration. And many people are saying they don't even have a word like that in their city. And and, and so, um, and which is something else that we're gearing up for to, to do some church planning. But anyway, um, but uh, if you are receiving from this ministry, the Bible instructs you to share uh, or sow back into what is feeding you. So if I'm feeding you as a pastor, as a man of God, I don't care if you got a church or a pastor, uh, but if you're coming to, to and receiving from our channel and receiving from these videos, which are being provided to you for free, then you are obligated to sow back and share back with this ministry because you are being fed. That's the biblical principle. That's the principle of Galatians 6 and 6. Galatians 6 and 7 goes on to say, uh, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. It's talking about sowing into a man of God. We use that scripture wrong. When whatever you sowing into a man of God, that and that only shall you also reap. If you sow sparingly into who's feeding you, then you're going to reap sparingly. But when you are liberal to those who are sowing the spiritual food into you, then, uh, then, then you will reap a liberal. And so uh, it's very important how you take care of an anointing, how you support the anointing and anointing that's, that's sown into your life. Don't leave, and I'm not just talking about me, don't ever take men of God for granted, somebody who's anointed, sowing that word into your life. Don't ever uh, uh, mistreat that or, or take or be common with that or feel that you don't have a part to play in their support. Because the Bible says, if I, if, if, if I sow into you my carnal, what is it that I reap your, if I sow into you my spiritual, what is it that I reap your carnal? In other words, we're supposed to have a reciprocating relationship. If you come to YouTube and you're receiving from those videos, then the Bible obligates you to begin to sow to so back to sustain my life. If the spiritual word of God is sustaining your life, then the Bible says you must share all good things with me, meaning your natural things should sustain my life. That's how you build a relationship. Uh, with a man of God and that's how the anointing flows into your life so that's why it's so important for you to uh, to understand obligation giving you know I don't, I don't like all of the gimmicks and tricks and playing the games I believe that if you've received the word if, if yokes are being destroyed if God is remove, removing your burdens and, and, and your life is getting better then that means you're receiving the word the anointed word is breaking the yokes and uh, you have an obligation at that point Certain things sparked my mind. Um, I realized that we have to rein in better, better word. We are a peculiar people, meaning we're not like everybody else. Believers are not like everybody else. We have to be careful that we don't let the customs of the world creep into a, I don't know about other churches but this church we flow in, in the wisdom that comes from above not the sensual wisdom that is being released through the gospel artist industry and these lascivious preachers say amen, amen. so I'm going to talk about it because we have to understand that there's a standard. Come on, say a standard. Let me see if you know what is the standard. 
Holiness. Holiness is always a standard. It's right, going to be right, never going to be nothing else. Holiness is the standard. And if we don't talk about it, then there will be no conviction for it. And you will see us looking like harlots. Acting like harlots. Living like harlots. It's a spirit that I believe the, the enemy released against the church maybe back in the late 90s. I, I saw it come in in the 90s and it's been prevalent ever since. We had a lot of debates about the order and protocol of ministry. Who should minister? Can women preach? I, you know, y'all remember them arguments? We had them arguments years ago. And I don't, I think we were in so much extremes. You had one side so extreme and the other side so extreme that we didn't really see what the enemy was trying to do. His goal is to always erode the foundation. The foundation is what keeps the building or the ship going the correct way. If the foundations be eroded, what shall the righteous do? So he hit at the foundation, attacked the order in the church, got us out of order, and now we have lasciviousness abounding. And we're almost afraid, I'm not, but most people are afraid to even say something about it because we have a culture that doesn't like correction or rebuke or to be taught anything. So we allow that to be in the house of God and we agree the spirit. We grieve the spirit. I, I said a while back, I'll say it again, I'll keep saying it. No, nobody should see the, the breasts and butt and hips of the woman of God. Nobody. Are uh, y'all quiet? Y'all quiet. It's that type of message. I told you, every few months, month or two, other month, I got to say her name. I'm going to talk about it today. Because I understand that we, we, we got to be careful not adopting the culture. Say amen. I don't care what they sell in Dillard's. You got to learn how to piece, sew, wrap, add fabric. Or you will be looking like a harlot. And it's very, it's very important that we don't cause one another to stumble. Not just you sisters. I'm not just on sisters, but I am going to be on you though. But, but also brothers. I stay on my sons because they're young and they, they like to show their muscles and well put your shirt on boy. Because I understand stumbling, people come to the church with all kinds of issues and trying to get delivered and set free. And the last place that you should be battling is in the house of God. The house of God should be a, 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 a it's not a safe place, but it should be where I can, are y'all there? Let's go here. Thank you, son. Give me one more. Give me one. Give me a hand for my son. Thank you. Thank you. It's up in the air right now. I'm not sure, but me and my wife, we're thinking about going to South Africa this week. This week. I forgot to book the ticket, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it tonight, but we're going we gonna to see. So if I'm not here Sunday, be here. Amen. That's how I travel. I don't travel quick. When I travel, you be like, where are you? I'm, I ain't going to tell you nothing. If you believe in the rapture, <laughs> look for me and I'll be gone. I'm going up. Went up yonder. All right, now, the spirit of the army. Amen. Y'all there? Y'all Leviticus 19. Amen. I'm not going to, I don't know if I'm going to be long or not. If you got to go home, that's fine. No better place in the house of God. Amen. Amen. You ain't going to do nothing but go home and eat and watch TV for two, three hours till you fall asleep with the TV on. So this is a better place. All right, Leviticus 19. Y'all there? Amen. Now it says 1929. 1929. Now I'm not going to address none of the stuff going on in Las Vegas. I know people probably tuned in and think I'm not. I am. I ain't gonna address it because it's false and foolishness. Uh, the people, there are some people that died, and we're sorry about that. And we, you know, we pray for those peoples and families. But the narrative is the same narrative of Sandy Hook. Go back and look at Sandy Hook. It's the same thing. They saying the same thing they were saying to Sandy Hook. 
The first thing, you always know the agenda when they, when what they start talking about right after, and they talking about guns again, gun control. They need to take your guns because it's very important for you to be defenseless so that the agenda of the New World Order can come through, can't come through with millions of guns in America. That's what that's all about. I'm not going to get into it. It's enough YouTube videos about it. Look up false flag, you'll see it. It's all there. Amen. Now, I'm not insensitive to that. There's people that did die, but ain't no 70-year-old man who don't carry 400 pounds of weapons up, up 32 flights, break out an 800-pound window, and spray people for 10 minutes reloading all the time. And this guy could barely see. Y'all ain't going to make me cut my head off. I know that was. I already said, I said when I, the night of house is false flag. It's a false flag. Because then right after that, all the celebrities, everybody started talking about gun control. I said, that's what it's all about. It's about taking guns. It's all, it's, it's all about. So they're going to eventually do enough false flag to pass legislation. Also, it was, a, it was that attention diverter away from the momentum of black men standing in that NFL. They didn't want that's. I told my wife, every time black men, especially when black men have a movement, they'll something, want, something like this will happen. Didn't I tell you that? I said, baby, I, I told her, I said, when the NFL thing happened, they started kneeling, I said, watch, a false flag is coming because they got to divert your attention. The last thing they wanted to see black men ever in unity. That was why they diverted their attention. Now they talking about that. And this guy going down there talking crazy in Puerto Rico, so that's a whole nother talk. But I ain't, if you tuned in for that, go to YouTube, look at false flags, vet. Amen. I'm going to deal with some other things. Amen. All right, now. Spirit of the harlot. Y'all Leviticus 19? Amen. Look at verse 29. It says, do not prostitute that daughter to cause her to be a whore. Y'all there? Yeah. Do not prostitute that daughter, meaning it's our responsibility how our daughters carry themselves. We have a generation that don't grow up, so we got mothers living vicariously through daughters. Say, so, man, same way with men don't grow up either. But we have this thing where mothers and daughters is on Facebook twerking together. We don't have a sense that we are allowed. We have a, the, the, the culture is a whole culture. It's a harlot culture. That's why they exalting people like Nicki Minaj and, and Beyonce running around half naked all the time. Why do you think they're doing it? It's a whore culture. They're promoting it to our young girls. Now, you got to understand, the spirit behind it, of course, is witchcraft because the goal is to cause our young women to become lascivious, to reintroduce bell worship. Bell worship is just where they uh, had lascivious sex and sacrificed the child. The child is the sacrifice. This is why behind all of the culture is Planned Parenthood. You better study it. They behind it all because Satan's real power is coming from the shedding of innocent blood. This is the reason why he, he promotes this type of culture because we are, we are back doing what Israel did when they went astray serving pagan gods. The Baal worship they were doing, we're back there. We're just not, we're doing it in a modern way, but we're still doing it. In other words, the Most High is still seeing the, the paganism in us because we are still embracing Baal worship. Are y'all there? So all of the culture, that's the reason why you'll never see none positive. You'll never see, no, ain't nobody, ain't, ain't nobody going to sing no positive song. Ain't nobody going to have no word of God. If any preacher is in that culture, he's false. Because they're not going to accept anything but false prophets. They'll never accept the real prophet because the real prophet has a sword that cuts. It cuts to their heart. It cuts like when Peter cut them on the day of Pentecost and they tried to bite him because they cut them so hard. That's how sharp the sword is. A real word of God will provoke a demon. Say amen. It'll provoke a devil. So they're not going to have anybody that makes them uncomfortable. So any preacher that's accepted is usually a false prophet. That's why Jesus said, be woe unto you when all men speak well of you because they only speak well of the false prophets. So if you're really a man of God, you got to have 50-50, meaning 50 love you, 50 bite you, 50 throw you off the cliff. You got to have that if you're real. Say amen. amen. So the culture is designed to produce harlots. Amen. Talk to me. Amen. It's a harlot culture. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't want to talk. I'm going there. It's, it's, I'm already there. They turn it off tonight. You might not want to. Tune in to this. It's going to mess with all of your clothes and everything tonight. Now, because, you know, 
there are things that, 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 especially in this church, I can't speak for other men of God, but this church, there has to be a level of holiness. Now, I don't mean we, know, we ain't no clothes. Now, I'm never, I don't even really talk about that stuff, but I'm going to say something today because I realize some of y'all, this generation ain't church. They don't know about church. They come in any kind of way, just don't understand how to look, just come in, sashaying around. No, you have to understand that there are things that nobody needs to see. Say amen. And you have to have, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Amen. You have to, there has to be a standard in the house of God. Say a standard. Now, the Bible says, do not prostitute that daughter. I mean, it's your responsibility. Like, as a father, as a father and a mother, it's your job to look over your child Amen. before they go out. Right. If you ain't got enough authority or they don't respect you enough to hear you say, no, change right. that, take that off, then you need, you got more problems right. than you think you do. Right. Ain't no child going to live with me and I can't say, uh-uh, take it off. <laughs> go change that. Rearrange that. Amen. Pull it up or down, one or the other, but you're going to get that right. Say amen. Why? Because I understand that my child is a reflection of me and how I let them go out determines whether or not I'm in agreement. See, some of y'all are the, are the let them smoke weed in the house mamas. That spirit that allows the child to be lascivious around you instead of you rebuking them, I'm not their friend. My wife's my friend. I ain't their friend. I don't need them as a friend. I need, to, I need to lead them. Amen. Say amen. amen. Say do not, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Y'all there or not there? Amen. Now why? Because, now listen to me. I know y'all, I'm going to get some letters about this because they always say I'm always talking. Yeah, I'm talking about this because the end time is about feminizing everything. Amen. It's about feminizing. I told y'all. The, 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 the uh, Satan, the reason why he took the image of the Baphomet, the Morphodite, the uh, uh, half man, half woman, was because that's his nature. It's to feminize men, to turn men into women. Amen. Say amen. amen. To cause our women to be dominant and to cause our men to be submissive. Reverse the roles, which brings the curse. Amen. Reversing the roles brings the curse. That's why the God told Adam, you, you curse because you hearken to the voice of your wife. I didn't train you to do that, boy. I taught you to be the man, to be the head, and to stand up. Amen. Satan knows if I can reverse the roles, man and woman will fall from grace. So he's reversing the roles through lasciviousness, meaning playing on the weaknesses in men. Say amen. amen. That means there's a natural weakness a man has towards a woman. A man is, is so a man is so weak in this area that it was very important that the Bible says she needed to be covered because if she's not covered, she can cause any man to fall. Y'all don't want to talk to me about this. Thus, the spirit of the last days is causing the hidden parts or the secret parts of our women to become exposed, whereby causing, say amen, a whoredom in the land. Let me go a little further. The Bible said there was a man named Judah, and Judah had sons and some of Judah's sons, uh, he was prom he promised to, to he, one of his sons he promised to marry to Tamar. And Tamar was a, 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 a girl that was, uh, that was in waiting. Amen. The Bible says that his younger son was growing up, but Judah didn't give her his son. So she, the Bible says, went and played the harlot. What, does, what, does, what is playing the harlot? Well, the Bible says, because I want to I show y'all for all you sisters who think it ain't nothing about how you dress and how you look. The Bible says that she put a veil on and nothing else and laid on, leaned on a rock waiting on Judah to come down while he was going up to, uh, I believe, the Syrian sheep or whatever. And, and when Judah saw her, because she was naked, Amen. the Bible said he went in unto her, gave her his signet, uh, uh, what was it, his staff? Ring. Gave her... And, and that's how quick he went in because he, he gave her this, gave her something that identified him. But it was based upon her playing a harlot. That's what we call entrapment. It's entrapment, meaning that uh, if you, this is the reason why I tell you, you cannot be with the opposite sex when you're not married alone for periods of time and you not get entrapped. There is a natural drive between women and men. See, the church don't talk about this because the church is full of fornicators. 
I said that's, uh, that's, one, that's, that's one time fornication. I'll get three more out before tonight. I'm going to say it three times. So what it is is that the church is full of fornicators and, and the pastors don't want to offend uh, 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 the people that's in fornication because he lose half of his congregation if he said fornication. So to appease to these baby mamas and the girls keep popping up pregnant, he don't say nothing about it. They preach on the men and see this the man when the men step up, the men got to step up, men step up, step up. Even if the man step up, quit pulling your panties down. Even if the brother step up, somebody got to keep it up. Nobody want to talk. It's one of them messages. Are y'all there? There's a whole spirit in there. I was looking at something the other day. It was a church I was looking at on, online. I was looking at this church, and they was just worshiping, and everybody was dancing, worshiping. And, and I looked at the up front, you know, down this part. And, and uh, you know, everybody was, you know how everybody just get to dancing up? And I, I said, I, I looked at the sisters down front, and I said, they know what they're doing. Right. All these sisters in the front had on the, I think he called the body, body con. Had the body con dresses, you know, and they pray like they act like they're in the spirit, but the, the booties is jiggling. And then the whole front row is full of brothers. And I said, and, and, and I'm sitting there immediately. I said, they know what they're doing. I said, now the pastor should have said, stop it. Stop the music. Because Satan has done this through the music. Through the music. Stop all the music. And don't rebuke necessarily the girls up front. Rebuke the mothers, the church mothers that used to regulate that. Why do you feel comfortable with this? You need to grab this young girl, take her to the back, and talk to her about how she presents herself in front of men of God. See, it's offensive to me. When you come around me, my wife will jump on you for that. But it's offensive to me because I don't want no harlots in my face. Don't be trying to tempt me. Well, if the men weren't lustful, well, if a man stood here naked, you going to be lusting too. This is the reason why the flesh stays covered. The Bible says no flesh glories in my presence. The flesh stays covered. Did y'all hear what I said? Whores reveal their flesh. The flesh of women of God stays covered. No man should see what he hasn't paid for with his life. I ain't talking about 40, 50 dollars. Talking about a ring in his heart and his life. No man should see that. Talk back to me. Do not prostitute that daughter. Meaning you have a responsibility to let her know how she should look. You brothers is married. Y'all, a lot of y'all slow. You brothers is married. The Bible says that you're supposed to, to wash your water, wash your wife. Word with the word with the water with the word, the word with the water. <laughs> then that means that that's a responsibility that you have as a man Amen. to guide and correct. Amen. Because your woman, so that she becomes the spotless, unblemished. That the Bible says she's supposed to be. So you are responsible. If you're going to correct her, you can't be cheap. Your sister should have said amen. <laughs> you know about this is two dresses in 10 years. and you, She done gained five, six pounds. And you still expect her? No, you got to spend some money, brother. Amen. Spend some money. But the point is, is that your job as a man is to look at her and 
you know, because that's your thing. Amen. So therefore, when she comes out, you, because you a man, and you know what men look at. And you want to make sure that ain't no brother going to be looking and stumbling over your woman. Amen. Say amen. Or your daughter. So you be honest as the man that you are. Because you know what your eyes fight. To. The last thing you want is somebody lusting your woman. Ain't nobody dressed for themselves. Everybody dressed for other people. If it wasn't, you walk around in a headband and, and pajamas. It's the most comfortable thing, headband, pajamas, and, 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 and sandals are sliding like you. <laughs> walk around sliding. <laughs> So everybody dresses for others. The point is, is that you have to make sure that you are, you, you are not causing people to stumble. And nowadays, we're living in a generation where it's not just men looking at your woman. You got a lot of homosexual women that are fighting homosexuality. That, that old lesbian spirit, they fighting it and they may be, you don't want them to stumble either. Oh, it's in the church. It's in the church. Are y'all there? And he says, he says, don't cause her to be a whore. Now why? Why? Lest the land follow the whoredom. Did y'all see that? It said if you allow your daughter to be a prostitute and allow her to be a whore, then the whole land, meaning whore, whoredom is contagious. It's contagious. Say amen. So it's very important that you rein in your house, that's why the Bible says you, see you brothers, man, y'all want to get married, and y'all want wives and children, but you don't really want the authority and the responsibility that comes from literally standing on the word in your house. Because when you try to tell one of these modern women, don't worry that, oh my goodness, you better, you're going to have to get a brace for a neck. It's going to snake on you and everything. When the snake come out, stand on it. Amen. See, I'm finding, I'm finding a problem. Our problem is, is you men don't know how bad a woman really wants a strong man. But if you gonna be weak, then she gonna take advantage of your weakness. So you gotta stand. Say amen. Let's keep going here. Oh, I'm in, I'm in here. I mean, I'm in here. Don't let your daughters be prostitutes. You mother, stop letting them wear these tight stuff. Stop. I don't care what their friends are wearing. You ain't wearing it because this is word, this molestation. What a men shouldn't be met. Where they are sick in the mind. Don't do nothing to make them. Did y'all hear about the story where the boy, the, this, this, this girl got, the, got this boyfriend, left him with her kids. The Negro tried to rape the daughter, the little girl seven. The boy, her brother's eight, tried to stop him. He beat the boy to death with a hammer and still raped the little girl. Meeting these cats in the club, don't know who they are. Bringing them around your children. Should no man be around your children at least a year. Should never be two, three years before he's ever alone and he better be married. Even, mar even if he's married to you. Don't be leaving no man, 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 man around your kids. You don't know who he is. Y'all see story after story after story. And y'all are not there. Do not prostitute that daughter. I see it all the time on Facebook. Y'all there? Y'all there? Not there? Amen. The mother made the whore dress for the prom. You see these prom dresses for these little girls? I'm like, what is? Why do they need? They might sweat just 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 put your panties on and go on to the prom because really there's nothing there. And then you see the mothers is happy about. It. I'm sitting there like, this you prostitute. That was just something came out. I can't think of what it was. I think it was little girls on the drill team or something. And they had on these, these uh, fishnet stockings like little, little prostitutes. And everybody and all the people, ooh, then you know on Facebook, you know how they comment, oh, they so cute. And see, see, they prostituting their daughters. 
They should have, and you don't need that. If you need to dance that bad, you don't need all that. See, y'all prostituting y'all daughters because y'all, y'all, y'all in love with the culture. You off the housewives and the hip hop girls and all that. You off that, you off that Hollywood stuff, and you don't understand that that's poison. And you have to fight that spirit from getting on your child. Say amen. amen. Well, why are you talking about the women? Because I am. Amen. I am. I ain't going to change right now. I'm going to keep it going down the freight train. I be seeing it all the time. I couldn't believe the stuff you just see just on Facebook, something real simple. And you be like, what, what, honey, if, 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 you, if you dropping it and twerking with the child, then there's no guidance here. You see the mother that had a, a baby, her baby with her on the stripper pole? Yeah, had a baby. She's on the pole, bro, with a baby. I'm trying to figure out what. <laughs> you just set this child's future. Don't prostitute your daughter. Let's talk better. Can we talk better? See, I grew up in an era of crack. And I was around, I grew up in an era where a lot of the mothers would put their daughters under drug dealers. Their young, underage daughters. Yeah. A lot of young girls got turned out because the drug, the mother was on drugs and she would, she would allow her daughter to be with the drug dealer so she can get a little extra dope. Do not prostitute. Talk back to me. Nobody wants to talk. Nobody wants to talk. It ain't going to get better. Let, now, what happens when we, when we prostitute our daughters? The land falls to whoredom. And the land becomes full of wickedness. I expect a ritual that happened in Las Vegas to happen. I expected something to happen there. Because they have legal whoredom. The land fell to whoredom, and the land is now full of wickedness. So full of wickedness means any evil thing can happen in the land because the land is full of whoredom. So I'm not shocked when they can carry out that ritual there because I know the, the atmosphere is conducive. Say amen. amen. This is the reason why you keep that spirit out of your house. And, and, I, and I'm hitting it tonight, making sure it don't come in here. And if you do come, you won't be comfortable. Oh, y'all ain't there. Oh, I'm going deeper. I'm going deep. I'm going deep now. It's going to get deeper than that. Go to, go, 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 to, go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings, let's look at chapter 9. Yeah, I got to deal with that. Amen. Got to deal with that. Amen. Amen. That's why I thank God for my wife because, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she tries to exemplify. Amen. Say Amen. amen. You ain't gotta be. You ain't. You ain't. You ain't. You ain't gotta. Be, you ain't gotta be ugly to be modest. We ain't talking about that. We're talking about sleeves to the floor, doilies on your head, and cotton stockings. And you, we ain't talking about that. We're talking about you collar up her. We ain't talking about that. We ain't nobody talking about. Ain't, 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 ain't nobody talking about being ancient and ugly. Ain't nobody talking about that. You ain't got to walk around like Herbert Tubman. Ain't nobody said nothing about that. Had no sackcloth on and all that stuff. Ain't nobody talking about that. I'm talking about you can still look nice, but see, modesty is is modesty. Is 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 a uh, it's something you have to develop. It's not automatic because you got to realize you came out of the world, and the spirit of the world is whoredom. And in the world, you were taught to use your assets to attract what you wanted. So when you come in the house of God, you have to understand. Paul says, "Everything I gain or even use in the world, I count it as." Dung now, meaning the stuff I used to do, the things I used to do to attract, I put all that down. And now what attracts is the quiet man of the heart. In other words, now my righteousness attracts. Amen. 
But we got to say that because you got to be careful because everybody don't come to church for God. So some people will still be coming to church using the assets in the house of God to get a husband or somebody else's. I said it. 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 Ain't no, ain't nothing more attractive than another woman's husband. They quiet, but it's the truth. Ain't nothing more attractive than that. Especially a man that's working, take care of his kids. Trust me, some little woman looking at that brother. So you better lock it down as the wife and put a sign around him to let them know I will literally strangle everybody in your house over. Now you can be tough and have his girlfriend think, I ain't sweating him. Go on, do that. Now don't be playing in that area. I don't, you ain't got to worry about what Pastor Steve said. You call me from the jail, Pastor. I had to strangle that girl. Well, well let's pray. <laughs> let's pray, Lord. Let her make bond happen. I ain't going to be no, be no whole lot for me because even the Bible says that if you catch somebody with your wife, you can't pardon that man for what he's going to do. So I ain't gonna, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be like uh, the girl that went crazy. Right now she did, she went woman on her. She went woman. She went wife. I ain't gonna be nah, he ain't gonna have me up here talking about. I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm saying, but we try to help you with the bond or get help you with a lawyer. Cause you gotta put the whores on notice. I said it. Put them on notice. You don't play that. I remember now, I'm talking, I'm, I remember, I remember, I remember years ago, you know, we, 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 me and my wife are very conservative. We don't even play, I don't even like people in my house. I don't, some of y'all probably come to the house and just stand at the gate. <laughs> stand out there. Just stand out there. It's, it's, this is personal space. Unless I, unless I invite you in or something, stand out there. But my wife would have to, you know, she, you have to get on people, even your own family. Don't, 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 don't be come around, don't be come around my husband with that on. Don't be coming around here with that. Don't be looking like that. Yeah. Yeah. Get on your, get on your little, your little thug cousin walking around with tattoos and the shirt off. Man, put your shirt on around my wife, dude. Put your shirt on. Before I give you a new tattoo. <laughs> put your shirt on. Run around here trying to come in my house, your muscles glistening. Put your shirt on around my wife. <laughs> I don't want her seeing you. <laughs> I'm serious. I ain't six packing right now. I don't <laughs> Put your shirt on around my wife. Come to here with your baby hair all laid down and down. Get, get on out of there. I'm, I'm serious. I want my wife seeing all that. <laughs> What'd I say? Second kids. <laughs> Come on, say protect your house. Protect your house. Yes, protect your house. Amen. Now, uh, are y'all there? Amen. Now, I'm just going to deal with a little part of this. I ain't going to go too far. Y'all know this is the chapter that I can really turn it up. I ain't going to turn it up. I'm just going to deal with a little bit. Amen. Chapter 9. I'm just going to deal with verse 30. This is when Jehu's coming for Jezebel. Ready to destroy her. Yes. That spirit is going to get thrown down. Are y'all there? Amen. Bible says when Jehu came and, and, and saw her, she was up, up in the window. Let's see what she did. Let's see what she did. And y'all at verse 30? And, and when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face, tied her head. She put her hair on. Put her on a queen wig. Put on her queen wig. And she painted her face because that's was a she what, what she was doing was trying to seduce him. She was trying to seduce him. She knew what her power was. She painted one one version uh, uh Bible that I was reading says she painted her eyes. This is the reason why when you study the book of Enoch and it says how the fallen angels taught women about 
how to paint their eyes because um, I told y'all before, women are very powerful. I mean, I'm, I'm keeping it 100 with y'all. Women are very powerful. The Most High made a creature that was very powerful, very beautiful. That's why he put up under a covering of the man. He wanted her to be covered because she's powerful. I'm, I'm just keeping it real. And he didn't want her to use that power. That power is the power of seduction. Amen. So when she painted her eyes, women can get you with their eyes. Amen. This is the reason why we have so much Mac. Six, seven eyes, shadows, all these colors. And uh, the biggest videos on YouTube are the girls putting on makeup or the boys putting on makeup. Amen. Because that's the, uh, 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 the seduction starts in the eyes. Talk to me. Seduction starts in the eyes. This is the reason why as a man, most men, I know I do, most men have what we call peripheral vision. Meaning you ain't even looking but you see it. You ain't got to look but you see it. See, when I ain't looking and I see it, I try not to meet eyes. Because I know the way she looks, she's trying to get, everything's about alluring, seducing, so I, I'm, I'm trying not to give her nothing. I don't want you to get no credit off me. I, don't, I, don't, I, I, I want you to walk past me and think you ain't got it no more. Like what? Like this is what's something wrong? Yeah, I, he, he, he didn't give me the response. So I, I make sure that I don't catch. Because see, sometimes it's the, it's, it's the you know, looking. That's, that's what all that alluring, darkening of the eyes. That's why the Egyptians had that, around, that dark around their eyes. They understood the power of seduction. Are y'all there? And so the goal is to have a righteous countenance. That when somebody look at you, they can see the most high. Amen. They can see the, the, the time you spent in prayer. Amen. Say amen. amen. They can see your relationship with Christ. Righteousness is beaming from you. Amen. That their attraction to you is one based on righteousness. Talk back to me. Amen. I didn't say makeup was bad. Y'all heard me say that? No. But when you're using it wrong... When, you, when, when, you, when, you, when, you, when it's when it's not modest, right. it's overdone. Amen. When you feel like you need this, Amen. then it's bad. Amen. Are y'all there? Amen. Because when I seen Jezebel paint her face, I said, "Oh, something about the painting of the face." Amen. Tired her head. I ain't say you had to have no nappy. I ain't say nothing about that. But I'm telling you, it's a woman's power. Even the Bible says a woman's hair is a glory. Amen. It's power. The Bible says she got to have something on her head. It wasn't talking about no hat or door. It's talking about authority, a covering. Amen. Talking about the man, a covering. She got to have a covering because she's powerful. Amen. Say amen. amen. And, you are, not, and you, are, you are commanded in the word of God not to use that power. Right. Say amen. amen. You are not to use that power. That's why... That's why you were supposed to be under your father first and he covered you and then you were supposed to go from your father to a husband and he covered you. Amen. So that you didn't use, because the Bible says the husband is the savior of the body. So you don't start using that power. You needed a husband to keep you from using that power. Amen. Satan ain't no fool. He knows what traps, what, you, what, he, what he needs to use. Are you there? Can we go further? Amen. Come on, can we go further? Amen. Go to Isaiah 3. One thing I feel church should be is safe. Amen. We ain't all got it all together, but my God, we should not be tempted in the house of God. Amen. Are you there? Y'all there? Amen. You don't get your style from the world. Amen. Get your style from the word. Amen. As a matter of fact, I told you, the Holy Spirit is the best teacher. Amen. He will teach you what you need to do. He will, he will speak to your heart and say, no, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't wear that. Don't put, don't put that on. Amen. He will teach you. Are you there? Amen. Because when you are a new creature, everything should be new. Amen. Everything should become new. You shouldn't have two wardrobes. Amen. You should have a wardrobe, period. Amen. You can wear it to work, you can wear it to church. 
All your club clothes should be gone because you ain't going back. Your little black dress, your little hot outfit, that should be gone. Yes, I'm in your closet. Yes, it should be gone. I said it. Ain't no woman of God need no yoga pants. They should make them illegal because some people just don't know. It should come with a label. <laughs> Have a warning stick on it. If your stomach is bigger than your butt, you don't need these. Walk past these. But no woman of God should have that on. You shouldn't be showing no hips. I could let my wife tell y'all. Y'all think I can preach it? She preaches too. But I'm the pastor, so I'm going to tell you. No man need to see your butt, your panty line. I'm saying it. Your breasts, your cleavage. Nobody should be seeing that. It's for your husband. That's why you keep getting the wrong thing. You keep using the wrong bait. Keep that bait covered. Develop the woman inside. Got a whole generation that don't even think they pretty because makeup done told them that unless they got this perfect flaw, unflawed face, perfect, unflawed, it's so bad that they, they surgery in their they butts and surgery in their breasts, trying to look like something that they could never be. It, it, it calls self hate. Amen. Love what you got. Amen. Love what God gave you. Enjoy what you have. Because when you love it, a, a man will love it too. I don't see beauty with all that, I see insecurity. That's why I tell some chick, this, this, you know what? Shave it all off. Shave it off. Start over. Start over. I said it. Start over. We ain't going to talk about you here. We understand. We understand. We understand. No problem. Just go on, get rid of it. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back with the little fro. Then you grow from the fro to the... Grow from the fro. Let it go. Let it grow. <laughs> get you some juices and berries. Work with it. Besides the scalp, hot oil treatment, whatever you got to do. Because you got bills, just I said it. I, 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 look, I look, look, I, I, I look, 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 look. I don't preach for money. I don't preach for you to come back. I don't have none of that. I can. I'm really free to say what I want to say. I'm already married. Got my wife. We straight. I can just say what I want to say. That's what's wrong. Enough preachers ain't telling y'all that. You're beautiful. With what God gave you. I, ha I don't have no problem with you making yourself. I have no problem. My wife looks nice. I like her to look nice. have no problem with that. But when your esteem comes from that, there's a problem. Enjoy what God gave you. Amen. And we as men can help a lot with that. We as men. I think, I think some of that is our fault too, man. I think because of our superficialness. Because we, this hip-hop generation that really believe women supposed to look like them women falling out of the video screen with the butts and the hair. See, that, see, we made the women think that's what we liked. Instead of us affirming what, what nature gave them, not nature, but the most high gave them, we should have affirmed that and, 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 and begin to have a realistic idea of, of what a real woman was versus what Photoshop and and all this spray on stuff talk to me so that our women would realize that because see one thing about a, a, one, one thing about our women especially our women they're very insecure and this is the reason why the woman will be like what she think you want she'll cut her hair like the girl she think you like she will cut her hair if, <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't going there I ain't going there let me go I'm straight down the road I'm going on Lay down the road. So we as men, you as a man should be affirming your wife. You should be telling her that you, you know, to cause her to not feel like that you have a, a, a light for that stuff. Amen. But you, but you, but, but you a real man with realistic understanding that you like the rolls, the folds, the stretch marks, 
but you shouldn't just let yourself go either. <laughs> like I'm walking in quicksand, bro. I'm, try, I'm trying to get out, but there's so many facets here. So many facets. We should, we should, we should, we, we, we should still try to be our best. Don't get married and just let yourself, just take, no, you should still try to be your best. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But it's our job as men, especially black men, to affirm our women so they'll feel like they don't need that superficial stuff. Talk to me. We have to affirm them. We have to appreciate the natural, what they have. Because they grew up with thinking Beyonce. They, they really believe that. That's the way they're supposed to look. To the point that we got our sisters dying their uh, skin, trying to be lighter than they are. This, this, this dark skin, light skin war going on. And I'm like, man, I can't believe we're doing this stuff. I've never understood that. That was one thing I never understood because I always said we all black. They call you light skin nigga, dark skin nigga. They're going to still call you that. So I never understood. I never understood why we have that issue. You know, because, you know, even, even though know, when, when I was in the world years ago, a, 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 a pretty woman's a pretty woman. It don't matter. You can be dark, light, chocolate, green. I don't care what. If you're pretty, you're pretty. You see some cartoons like that, cartoons cold, so it, it, don't, it ain't got to be no real woman. But we got this thing where because of Hollywood and the media has told you this is the standard of beauty, which is really a white woman, which you can't be. That's why our black women got blonde hair, downy hair, all different kind of color stuff, because they don't understand what God gave them. You don't know these white women want that melanin in you so bad, they want your melanin. They just came out with some pills or some type of thing that, that make them make them dark, make them dark like us. Now all these hundreds of years they've been talking about this darkness. Now they want the darkness. Now that would have told me y'all been jealous of us a long time. Send us out there just in the sun, just just you know just in the sun, enjoying the sun. They are, they, they under the shade trying to figure out why how they how y'all understand? Want that melanin? I know why they don't like Africa. Just looking at all these Africans just running around in the sun. The Africans ain't got no porch. <laughs> you have to be sitting in the sun, man. I was over there one day. I was like, hey, man, can we sit in the shade? Brother, just sitting in the sun, man. He was cool with that. Oh, come over to a European country. Everybody's under the sun in the shade. We, uh, we, we, you know, we got something in this stuff. Y'all don't know. This melanin, it costs 300 it's close to $400 an ounce, melanin. Melanin, it's close to $400 an ounce. That, that's why I told y'all where the missing people are. Still in that melanin. This is what chemtrails are. They, try, they, they make them block the sun. Y'all, I'm telling you, the melanin is all that. Melanin is all that, i tell you. Amen. All right. Lord, I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to get out of this. Well, okay, okay. Let me, I'll, 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 I'll give y'all one more script. Go to 2 Kings. We, we, no, 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 no. No, 2 Kings. Did I say Isaiah? I'm going to skip over that because that's just it's going to take me too far away. Go back to 2 Kings. Uh, no, no, go to 1 Timothy and I'll be done. 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2. I'll be finished. We, we do have to heal as a people. We really have to heal. We really have. We've had everybody telling us who we were, tell, giving us our, our standards of beauty and love and, and how we're supposed to appreciate one another. We, we've let other people tell us. And that's the reason why I'm so big on marriage because I know that's where the healing is going to come from. When a, when a man honors a woman by giving her his life. See, my wife is worth my life. See, she wasn't just worth a baby or you know, hooking up. She was worth my life. How many of y'all know that? That helps the steam right away. That a woman, that this is what causes really, this should be where the woman's joy actually comes from when the realization hits her that this man has given me his life. I'm worth his life. That's esteem. That's brother, that's what you're giving when you say you want to marry a woman. You're giving her your life. Your life is all of you. Everything you're going to have from her on out. It's going to be in her. And when you die, she will get the rest of the life that you left. 
it will go to her. Say amen. That's the way it should be. Are you there? You have to understand that that's, we could heal our, we could heal our people easily if we got the mindset that only we can heal our people. The government ain't going to do it. White folk won't do it. No, no, no program going to do it. Only us. Only us. Amen. Say amen. amen. And that's the reason why I'm so big on marriage. I'll always preach it. I'll always tell you come out fornication because fornication is the devaluing of our women. Amen. It's devaluing, meaning you're only taking and you're not giving anything. Say amen. And you as a woman, if you have so much taken, you'll become depleted, meaning you won't have anything left to give. And this is the reason why you save yourself. Because you want to make sure that you, when, 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 when Prince Charming, which is not real, I don't want to use that. <laughs> now, he might not be a frog, but he a dude with issues. <laughs> When he come along, then you'll have something, you'll be able to give yourself because you have something to give, meaning you haven't been depleted by so many men taken from you. This is what fornication has done to our community, and then the government subsidized fornication and having babies out of wedlock by paying our women to do it. I'm saying what I'm saying, and, uh, and, and that's why we out there marching and we trying to figure out how to get our family. None of that's going to happen until we understand that it is in the black man and it is in the black woman. We have to we have to heal. We have to come to, it's us. Amen. And that's why no matter what I'm preaching, I mean, I can preach it to get saved and go to heaven, but to go what, living in, this, living in this life, I have to live an example in front of you to show you what success is. Amen. And that's the reason why me and my wife are strong in marriage and our children have grown up under it, because that's the only thing going to heal our community. Are y'all there? Are y'all there? Y'all still tight? I skipped two tough scriptures, so y'all ought to be all right. Second Timothy 9, y'all there? In like manner, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair. Did it say you can't braid your hair? Did it say don't braid your hair? No. It said that shouldn't be where your glory of where your beauty actually comes from. Nothing that you put on should be where you get your beauty from. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Or costly pearls or gold or costly array. It's talking about modest. Say modest. modest. Modesty is not plain. Plain Jane. You know how people say this. No, that's not necessarily modesty. Amen. Amen. But you have to know the line between this harlot culture, adopting harlot looks and attitudes and clothes and, and understand what modesty is. Come on, say modesty. modesty. The best definition I ever had for modesty was tone down. Just tone it down some. You don't have to always stop everything, just tone it down. Say amen. Say, tone it, down. tone it down. Modesty means doing everything in, in, in uh, what's the word I look for? Moderation. Mo say moderation. moderation. Now, you know, we know a lot of sugar's bad for you, but you don't cut out all sugar. Right. Don't eat a lot of it. Just tone it down. Right. Come on, talk to me. Amen. Fried chicken is delicious. <laughs> it's just delicious. I don't care what they say, the stereotype or whatever. I don't understand how we stereotype with chicken. And, 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 and I'll be like, Panera Bread, all they got is chicken. Every, every place got chicken. And, the, and you know who, who got the most chicken? The white man on the chicken bucket. You know, it's a white man on the chicken bucket, but they say we, we just love chicken. I don't care what you say. Chicken delicious. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just always going to be good. But you can't eat a lot of it. You can't eat it every day. You know, in moderation, it's, it's okay. You see what I mean? So that's what it means. It means, you know, I don't think I'll make us bad. Just be moderate with it. Amen. Don't go overboard. Don't come in here and be like, who was that? <laughs> you know, like we don't even know who you are. Or you come in here with the angry bird eyebrow. <laughs> you know, you done, you done messed up. <laughs> Stop all that. Done. See, you done, you, done, you done tweaked it so much, you ain't got none. You done poured it and did so much. 
Now you got to draw them on and you're rushing to get to work and you look like a Chinese person all of a sudden. Stop! <laughs> Just enjoy what you got. We're going to love you anyway. Just enjoy what you got. Say amen. amen. Say moderation. moderation. Everything should be done in moderation. Say everything. everything. Moderation is what's safe. Amen. Say safe. safe. Amen. Moderation is what's safe. Because like we as that, that, that serve the Lord and we as believers, we think you come into the faith and it's like you feel like everything you do is wrong. No, everything ain't wrong. Everything ain't wrong. It's when you begin to uh, go too far with stuff. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God doesn't want you to be a, a, a person who can't handle stuff. But you can't go so far with stuff that you go over the moderation line. Say amen. amen. Are y'all there? Amen. So be very careful. Listen, in, in this ministry, and I'm only saying it because in this ministry, I'm real mindful. Because I haven't said, y'all know I ain't preached on nothing like this in a long time. I only know the last time I even said nothing about this. But I'm saying it now because I want the sisters that's coming, the brothers that's coming, the people watching online to understand what kind of, don't think because you see people walking around here like that, that I'm okay, that I'm sanctioning that. I understand they might just be young, they might not know, and I'm telling you now that if you put on something that's revealing, find something else to put on before you come to church. Now the Bible say, come, I can see that, I heard that, come as you are, yeah, but don't stay that way. You can come as you are, but don't stay that way. And this is a ministry, we buy clothes for people. I buy brother suits, buy many brother suits, and if your sister ain't got no clothes, we will take care of you, trust me. I ain't gonna just talk to you. We'll actually buy dresses for you. We don't have no problem. My wife, you can come talk to her about how to, how to be modern things, and she'll help you. Say amen. Because it's very important that you, but that shows that you're growing. When you begin to come out of certain things, when you begin to change some things. Are you there? You have to say grow. grow. Same way with the brothers. I mean, you know, with, I don't know necessarily if it's brothers <laughs> showing their body. I don't know if that's the issue with brothers, but, but I think brothers is the flirtatiousness. Amen. Stay out of women's faces. You brothers, man, stay out of women's faces. Don't be up in no single. See, you, some of you brothers be knowing the power that you have in church because you always usually have more single sisters. Stay out of these sisters' faces. Amen. If you're a single brother, if you ain't looking at this woman to court her, or you really being serious, get out of face. Why? Why? You marry sisters, stay out, of, stay out of these single brothers' faces. Amen. Marry brothers, stay out of single sisters, stay out of people's faces. Amen. Talk to your wife. Talk to people with your spouse right there. Now I'm saying what I'm only saying this because I know what I see. It shouldn't be where I keep seeing the same brother in the sister's face. Now I ain't going to say nothing now, but the next time I see it, I'm going to rebuke you. Yeah, that's why I'm saying this tonight. I shouldn't be keep seeing no married man and no single woman face. I'm going to have a problem with that. And if you a wife and you see that, you... What y'all talking about? You have the right. You have the right. The church should be safe, and it ain't safe when we have all of this. Y'all know I've been in churches like that. I've been in churches where they just up in each other's faces, just sashaying in each other's face. The man, man of God don't say that he's up in people's face. We don't play that here. Say amen. We want holiness in here. That's the reason why I'm telling you how to dress and how to look so that you make sure you have a holy appearance. I'm not trying to make you self-conscious, but you should be when you come in the house of God. See, I, see the reason why I know that you know when you, what you got on is wrong is when you come around me. You know what they start doing? That's, that's how you know. You feel self-conscious when you come around a holy person, so you start doing this. Now, if you got to do this, that was the wrong thing. You shouldn't have to do that. If we, if, we, if we can't lay hands on you, you fall down without a penny showing, then that's the wrong thing. You know, they can't even shout, right? They just the hands up, they can't shout. That's, that's the wrong thing. Talk to me. That's the wrong thing. Say holiness. holiness. 
It's still right. It's still right. We got people coming literally from all over this nation. Y'all, it's a small church. I ain't, I ain't got no problem with that. But online, it's, it, this church is big. Trust me. Very big. And they come from all over. And I don't want people coming up in here thinking that we running some type of whore some type of whore uh, circus. I mean that. With, even with these brothers. Like I say, one of the things you have to realize as a brother is our sisters are very, I, I, I guess I want to say open to the idea of, 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 of a man choosing them. And so when you as a man be up in her face, you stirring up stuff that you shouldn't be. You as a brother got to be mindful. It might not be what you look like because it's not necessarily our looks that women look. It's what we say. It's our talk. It's our conversation that fulfills women more than anything else. So when you up in her face, you awaken in love. You stirring up passion because that woman go go home and think about you and think maybe he's the one. Maybe he's the one. And if you playing with her by just up in her face because you want that to see if you still got it then you wrong. That's why I tell you, brother, don't even step to a sister unless you're serious, unless you really, it's, you can say, hi, hey, how you doing? But don't be up in her face if you ain't looking at her like you can talk to her serious. Leave her alone. Because ain't no wolves in here. I drive wolves out of this church. You ain't going to get no lamb and be up in here. You see it every every church I've been in, I've seen that happen. Where a brother come in and and and, and, and you sisters leave these Negroes alone until they get holy. You don't know these brothers. This Negro could be a child murderer. He was all up going out to dinner. Leave him alone. Let the brothers do what they need to do. Let the brothers work with that brother. Let us get to find out who he is. Let us work with him a little bit. Before you fall in love with him. I've seen them do that. Then a brother, you hook up, you put a baby in your Negro, gone, you don't even know where he's going at. Leave him alone. Let these brothers get holy first. If that's the one God got for you, trust me, what God got for you is for you. But don't be secretly over here hooking up, getting phone numbers, slipping and sliding. Leave the brother alone. You don't know this brother. Did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. I'm a real pastor. I got to protect the sheep. Yeah. So stay out of these sisters' faces, brothers. Yeah. Even you married brothers. I don't even know why you would be in a woman's face. You married. If one of you sitting out, and if one of you wives sit back and watch your man in a, and some sister up in your man's face, I'm going to have a problem with you. Like, why ain't you seeing what's going on there? You need to, what's going on there? Stay out of that sister's face. Amen. Say amen. amen. And Lord forbid you, oh Lord, don't get in my wife's face. Lord, don't, Lord. I don't have no problem. See, y'all see, y'all want people to be so holy. Look, I'm holy, but I know my boundary. I'm very protective of my home. You want to see me just come all out of the, just all out of the, I'll, I'll just take the mantle off. <laughs> I'll sit it there. Hopefully, I'll be qualified after I do what I'm going to do to you. Hopefully, the Lord will let me pick. But if I can't, get my bell ready, baby. Get my bell ready. Men should be militant. We are the only men. We are the only men that let people disrespect our women. We are the only. That's why the police feel so good choking our sisters out. We are the only men that sit up and dog our own women. We won't fight for them. We won't go to war for our sisters. We're the only men that let people, you go do a Muslim woman like that and see what happened. Man, did she go get her son to suicide bomb your whole family? <laughs> I remember being in Africa. I seen a brother say something to a brother's wife. The brother said, I will slap you. I will slap you. <laughs> hey, when Africa say they're going to smack you, boy. Boy, they, are, <laughs> they don't say smack. I, I will slap you. I will slap you. And he gonna slap you when he say he gonna slap you. I will slap you. They fight for their women. 
We're the only people that our women can disrespect it. Shouldn't be nobody feel comfortable disrespecting our women around us. I only care if it ain't my wife. Shouldn't nobody feel comfortable like that. Stand on your feet. I remember seeing me and my wife watching this video one night, and uh, it was a brother that's talking. This brother, I think he was from Nigeria. He was saying, he was showing a video of another brother that was talking to this sister. And this sister was really talking. She was, they was, they was both Nigerian. They was all Nigerian. And he was, he was narrating the video. And the sister, she did, I think she walked in the bathroom on the brother by accident. Well, it wasn't accident. She purposely did it. And the brother didn't play that. And when he came out of the bathroom, and the brother narrating was saying, watch what he say. <laughs> he walked up to the sister and said, do that again, I will slap you. <laughs> now the guy that was nervous and said, now watch, he's gonna slap her. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna, and the sisters, the sister said, you ain't gonna do nothing, you know, she was after two, she said, you ain't gonna do nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was one that <laughs> back slapped her. She, did, she said something very disrespectful because she said something about what she saw See, she went there. She went there. And, he said, and it was a room full of people, and he was, he, she disrespected him. His partners grabbed him because they knew he said, I'm going to slap you. I'm going to slap you. I'm going to slap you. Put his hand, I was. <laughs> slap you. I will slap you. Put his hand, I will slap you. Now, you know, we don't, we don't hit women. <laughs> We don't hear women. I don't believe in that. But don't be messing with a man. If a man say he's gonna leave him alone, if they ain't gonna slap you, then he don't be don't be picking no fight. You know, I ain't gonna be I ain't gonna be fight for you. You pick a fight. You pick a fight, he slap you, that's on you. you say leave him alone, leave him alone. But say, say protect. And that's why I'm saying this. Protect your home. As we grow, amen. We're going to text. We got a lot of cities we're going to. And those of y'all gonna be on the road with us, see that's another thing. When you're on the road with me and my wife, don't be on the road all sexy. Don't be on the road. We 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 followers of Christ. I don't want you. Don't be. You ain't got to be desperate like that. You try to look nice, but don't be doing. Cause I remember being someone. I'm like, nah, that's. You know these brothers. You don't know who these brothers are. These brothers from California. You don't know who they are. Don't don't be don't be desperate. Because that's a reflection. Y'all up in the praise team, when you up here and you dress wrong, it's a reflection on the house. People be watching online, they think, they think I'm with that. That's why I don't have y'all singing behind me. That's why you over. I don't want you behind me. Because if you're looking wrong, I don't want that to reflect on me. I know I, and you know, that's why my wife, some of y'all don't even know, that's why my wife sit right there. She sit right there because she, she literally has my back all the time. She's the first person that got my back, is my wife. And then I also, I also do that as, as a position of honor, because a lot of times, a lot of pastors don't be honoring their wives. And that's why the sisters in the church feel like they can push up, because the man of God don't honor his wife. I've been in church where the pastor did not honor his wife. And the sister was all in his office, all in his face, and he didn't honor his wife. His wife's over depressed and angry, because he didn't draw a definitive line to give her the honor that she deserved. And that's the reason why my wife is where she's at. Another reason. Now, I'm, I'm done. Another reason is because we, we have over 20 years of this, of marriage and ministry. And we've gone through a lot of stages. And for where she is now, the woman of God she is now, I want her for y'all to see that example. Because we've come through a lot. we come through a lot of... If, if, if you think I'm tough when it comes to this church, no, I'm, no man, I'm, I'm, I've always been more tough with my wife because I understood that she's going to be my, my success or my downfall. And, we, and we've worked for years on things that need to, you know, and she's, she's that woman. She's that woman of God. And so if you need help, listen to me now. I'm not going to leave you hanging. If you need help, 
You, my wife even can sew. A lot of stuff she wears, she makes herself. She can even sew. And a lot of, a lot of her sewing was based upon not being able to find black woman clothes that wasn't sensual, tight, sexual. So she had to sew some stuff. She had to go back with an with a, with a old classy style, that old 50 style sometimes, a classy style, where you could have the, 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 the you know, with the, the dresses where, you know, don't show all the hips and stuff, that type. You know, some, you got to understand your, your body as a black woman, you know. You're blessed in some areas, you got to know that. So you got to understand how to, you know, work and maneuver and cut stuff and do stuff. And so she learned to do that, and I'm very proud of her that she does that. So if you need help, you can come and talk to her. Come and ask her. Come talk to her. She will, she will take her time to tell you. You know, that's, her, that's part of her job, you know. Some other sisters, there's a lot of sisters here. They, they, a lot of our sisters, are, they, they dress nice, you know. So you can go to older sisters and ask them. Say amen. If you brothers ain't got no suits, come talk to me. I may not buy you one right away. <laughs> I ain't no suit right away, brother. You be around for a while, you can come get no suit and jet. You be here a little while, get you a suit. <laughs> My brother suit, he gone, no. But, but, but I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you to do something you can't do. But that's what the church should be, man. We should be, you know, you see these young sisters in here and they trying, you know, help them. Sisters, don't, don't talk about them. Help them. Go to them. And, Honey, let me help you out. Let me, you know, some of you sisters got stuff in your closet these young girls can wear. Girl, you ain't gonna never go down to that size. You was a four a long, long time ago. You ain't never gonna be no four. You holding on to that four like you're going back. <laughs> holding on to that four like, like one day. Girl, give that four to this girl. Give that two. Give that two to that girl. You ain't going back. <laughs> Not going back. Moving ahead. Girl, you moving forward. Give that four up. <laughs> a young girl could use that four. Because really, we do have a lot of stuff already that we could just be blessing people with. When you see our, these young girls coming here, a lot of them are joining the ministry, they're young, and you see, they're they not going to know. So that's your job. Don't criticize them. Go to them, help them. Hey, hey, sister, I got this for you. Would you like this? And, you know, help them out so they can, you know, realize. Because the, the matter of fact, what blessed me the most was when I came out of the world, I had a lot of street clothes because I'm, you know, from the streets. But there was a brother in church, man, one of my best brothers, man. He gave me a real nice suit. First suit I ever wore. And just fit just perfectly. And it made me feel so good to have this suit on that from there on I started liking suits, wanting to buy suits. My attitude and everything changed just based on having a nice suit. So that's why I say when you... You know, when, 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 when these young girls that ain't, they ain't wore nothing but jeans and stuff that show their body off, and all of a sudden somebody care enough to, you know, help them with something nice, creatively nice, you know. That's why we used to say how big girls used to dress back then because they had to be creative, and now they just wear they just, they yoga pants and stuff, just, you know. But they was very creative because, you know, they understood, you know, I ain't trying to show all that. But when you, when, 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 if, if you show a young girl how to put something together nice, man, she'll cherish that. She appreciate somebody cared enough. Amen? Amen. 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 Did y'all get my message? Yeah. All right, let's pray. Let me let y'all go. Did y'all get something out of the word? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So a little spanking ain't bad. Every now and then, Lord, give us a little spanking. Help us out. Yeah. Father, we thank you for your truth, your light, your understanding, your word. Father, we want to be better. Yeah. Father, I went to church for years and didn't grow. Went to church for years and played around. I want to be better, and I know you must challenge me. You must cut me in areas I don't want. Even if I don't like it, I must allow you to surgically remove garbage, the sins and weight that are easily besetting me. Only you know. You know my mess. You know what I'm dealing with. I release you to cut me. I release you to convict me. Anything bad in me, get it out of me. Everything that's keeping me from you, get it out of me. I want to be better. I want to come to the house of God and be better. Hallelujah. So I thank you for the work that you have begun in us. 
that you shall complete it and finish it. Lord, I could have been anywhere. I could have been in a whole nother religion. But in 2017, I'm seeking you. I'm signing up to be disciplined, to be a disciple, to be corrected. I'm glad you didn't let me go the way I wanted to go. You didn't let me go astray. So for all that, I give you praise. I'm grateful that you sent me somewhere. That they won't run from my mess. But a man of God will deal with me. Will demand the potential in me. Will command me to live the word of God. Thank you, Lord. That you thought enough about me. That you didn't leave me in dead religion. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit continue to do the work that you started. Stir up the gifts in me. Stir up the gifts of prophecy and the gifts of, 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 of healing. Stir up those gifts in me. Stir up those gifts. Perfect my testimony. That I will speak and deliver people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Be seated.